Asteroids remain a really important threat to think about. There's tens of thousands of them out there that have not been well observed yet and could impact the Earth in the future. We don't know when or, or how they will impact, how large they will be. And so there are telescopes devoted all the time to looking for these asteroids and hunting them down and, and helping us predict when and if they're going to impact. And if we know ahead of time that they're going to impact, we have the ability to do something about it. The kinetic impact method is very straightforward. You're changing the orbit of the asteroid simply by dumping a lot of momentum into it from a high speed impact. So typically it would just be a spacecraft traveling at 10 kilometers per second or more. It impacts the asteroid and dumps its momentum into the asteroid. But then it gets this extra boost of momentum from any ejecta that is coming off the asteroid above escape speed. And the escape speeds of asteroids are typically very low on the order of five or 10 centimeters per second. So a lot of the material is above escape speed and that provides an extra boost of, of momentum. So that whole process will then change the velocity of that asteroid in its orbit on, by the, something like a, a few centimeters per second, hopefully, and take it off of an Earth impacting trajectory. The DART mission, if it's approved to go forward, will be the very first test of the kinetic impactor concept. And what's so ingenious about the DART mission is that we're going to be deflecting a moonlet that's in orbit around a larger asteroid. So these two bodies together comprise a binary asteroid called Didymos, which is the Greek word for twin. And by deflecting that small asteroid, the orbital period will be changed and we'll be able to observe from ground-based telescopes here on the Earth just how much that asteroid has been nudged by and have a precise measurement of how effective the kinetic impact deflection technique really is. And it's just a really amazing opportunity to see how this method can work at large scale because um, we can't simulate experiments that scale um, in the lab here at Earth, obviously. So we need large scale experiments like this in order to check our simulation results to make sure that we are accurately representing how a real asteroid would respond.